Hello YouTubers, welcome back to another video with me, Adam Uninformed. If you are a Tesla owner, are you confident you're getting the best out of your Tesla in the cold and wintry conditions? I looked out of my bedroom window this week and thought, blimey, it's miserable out here today and in typical British fashion, I know it's here to stay, at least for the next few months. So why not embrace it for this week's video? It is very much about making the best out of a bad situation from weather dodging software tips to maximizing range in difficult conditions. This is everything I know for you to make the most out of the colder weather, whether that's jack frost, heavy rain or snow. I'll also be discussing how the latest Tesla software update 2022 36.8 has made winter driving even more convenient. Bringing it back on topic, when it comes to winter driving, we know it's a difficult time for combustion cars and electric cars alike. They actually both suffer in very similar ways, but how they address them issues differs whether you drive a petrol car or a Tesla Model 3. And we are talking about vehicle warm up, drivability, and just pure energy consumption to name a few wintry effects on driving in these conditions, compared to the warmer temperatures found in spring and summer, unless you live in Britain, of course. So what are the EV related solutions that Tesla Model 3 or the Tesla Model Y owners can utilize? There's quite a few to get through, so before we kick off, I'd appreciate if you could give the video a cheeky like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you are interested in Tesla EV content weekly, hit the notification bell so you're the first to know when a video goes live. Right, let's get into it, folks. So, picture yourself at home. What can we do as Tesla owners to enhance our upcoming journeys where possible? Due to Tesla's software optimizations as standard, they have a lot of weather enhancing options built in and optimized for cold weather driving that you may be missing. Those features are expanding year on year. For example, if you're not utilizing your car, if you can actually keep it plugged in wherever possible, the car will actually suckle, yes, suckle is my word of choice here, a small amount of power in order to keep the battery in a warmer state. And that's all software managed without human input. And you'll see why that's handy to be in a warmer state in just a second. And if we go one step further, you can utilize the preconditioning and scheduled departure features. So what's this sorcery you're talking about, Adam? For the vehicle to be in a prime and happy state for the most efficient drive, having a warmer battery rather than a cold one will always be the more efficient choice. You can automate this for routine morning getaways or initiate it manually. The choice is yours. So to manually start the preconditioning process, you simply need to head over to the Tesla app and turn climate on. So not only will the cabin warm to ensure it's warm and cozy, heat will also be scavenged to the battery for that more efficient drive. I love a two-in-one win-win situation, but it doesn't stop there. This will also help regain some break-in regen lost due to a cold battery state. If you're not aware, the screen has this bar and it portrays acceleration and braking inputs, regen or conventional braking. For braking, the bar moves further to the left as it gets harder or harsher. And if the bar turns gray on the left, that's actually conventional braking. You know, from when you actually press the brake pedal. If it's green, that's regen. So if you jump into a stone cold Tesla, the chances are you'll start with very little to no regen capabilities available. If you got hold of your Tesla during them warmer months, this change in regen might actually catch you out. However, don't worry, this is totally normal. It will get better with driving as the battery warms up. But using this tip, you can help eradicate the cold regen deficit. Another easy way to identify reduced regen is seeing the dotted lines on that very line on the screen. As the car warms, those dotted lines will be replaced with a solid line to demonstrate the availability that the regen capacity is available once again. Pretty neat, right? If you wanted to automate a preconditioning event, you can even do that via the scheduled departure tab. Simply turn on preconditioning in the settings, hit schedule to set the daily time to be ready. Another way you can identify if you have a cold battery is the presence of the snowflake icon on the screen. So what happens in this scenario? You wake up and there's snow all over your car. How do you deal with that? Well, in typical Tesla simplicity behavior, you can simply manually heat the cabin and it should detect the snow for which the window heater will commence automatically, which will ultimately solve the visibility as you put your long johns on and make coffee ahead of your departure. And to clarify, I've never wore long johns, but apparently it keeps you warm in winter. So I thought I'd go with that. Anyhow, but what happens if your door handle is frozen? Well, Tesla has thought about that process recently, and thanks to a brand new software update, literally got mine a day before the video, you now have two options at your disposal. First being an all-time classic, bump the handle with your fist until the ice is broken. The second way is brand new. All you need to do is apparently open the app, hit the icon, which will automatically release the driver's door as a result. 
and this is so new to the scene that I've not even had the chance to try it. So if your carport is also frozen, you should follow the preconditioning steps as well and the car will heat the carport as standard too because there are some heating elements around there for this very purpose. The final tip before moving on to winter charging is to do with conserving energy whilst driving. This will be obvious to most, however, be nice and tame when accelerating and deaccelerating throughout your drive. And once the battery and cabin is warm, you could consider lowering the cabin temperature and using the seat heaters for added warmth instead. And this should lower the consumption related to the cabin heater. Tesla literally just introduced a new energy tab, which will demonstrate much more clearly on how much energy is being used for each consumption point. I literally got this as part of my update so far, and this is the very first time messing around with it. So it will be interesting to analyze how much energy drops by just taking such an action in the future. And by the looks of things, the energy tab should provide advice on how to improve your efficiency too and it appears my wife is a very aggressive right foot that said i didn't really need the car to confirm that for me anyhow it should be super human friendly on what you need to do in order to get better energy consumption and so a better vehicle range so now picture yourself considering a road trip how do you maximize your charging capabilities during these cold temperatures Ideally, you've preconditioned your car like we've just mentioned and ideally you've done so while still plugged into the wall charger as this takes power from the grid rather than the battery, therefore preserving you some range. You will then be preconditioned to optimum temperatures without sacrificing power from the battery. If you need to stop a supercharger on the way, try to utilize one closer to your destination as the longer you drive, the longer opportunity the battery has to precondition itself automatically as you reach your supercharger. To ensure that happens, input your destination into your sat-nav, even if you know your destination. By simply utilizing the sat-nav, the car will know when to precondition as it's closer to the supercharger. And the reason why it needs to be so toasty is because this will maximize your charging speeds. There'll be a big difference between supercharging in a colder state than a warmer state. And that ultimately translates to a quicker charging stop too. So to summarize how to be a charging badass here, precondition your car before entering and to coin a freeze bun beyond, ABC, always be charging if possible, then always insert your destination into the navigation, even if you suspect you don't need a supercharger at some point. Then always insert your destination into the navigation if you suspect you'll need a supercharger at some point. Okay, so now picture yourself with a lovely blanket of snow. I guess that's subjected as to whether snow is lovely or not. I mean, I've never been a fan of yellow snow. Anyhow, what steps can you take beforehand to tackle this type of weather? Well, if you know in advance that the weather is due to change, immediately consider repositioning the mirrors. And the reason why you do that upon locking and unlocking the car is normal behavior for the mirrors to auto fold in or out. And if you have a buildup of ice or snow for that matter, you run the risk of overworking the motor as it tries to clear it. So be one step ahead, simply turn the auto folding off via the controls and quick controls, mirror and mirror auto fold. You can then manually open and close your mirrors to restore automatic mirror fold. Another preparation technique you can utilize is putting your wipers into the service position. Action required is just a few clicks away. Simply head over to controls, service, wipers service mode, Ensure washer fluid is topped up and rated for cold temperatures should you need it. And finally, a tip that is underappreciated is to wipe clean any sensors and cameras that you have, whether that is your ultrasonic parking sensors, if you have them, and or your autopilot cameras, as without doing so, this could prevent some of your convenience and safety features from working. In particular, I've had issues with the parking sensors beeping, all because I forgot to clear them. It's a small and simple mistake, but still worthy to correct. And finally, if the ice and snow are a regular occurrence for you, you should consider winter tyres and tyre chain options. You can actually seek further guidance via the Tesla manual, so I'll, I'll pop a link of that in the description for your reference. So to conclude, winter definitely sucks for personal transportation, whether that is for the Tesla Model 3 owners or petrol car owners alike. And I think that the key difference is how much more convenient the Tesla option is when tackling the winter effects. The introduction of software capable transportation has allowed for totally new mainstream opportunities to even the load and refine the experience to make it as pleasurable as possible. There simply is no better feeling than preconditioning the car like 15 to 20 minutes beforehand, leaving the house, feeling that temperature change, and then sitting in the warm, cozy car in a prime state to drive. I have a Tesla Model 3 SR Plus, and so it is rear wheel drive. Over two years worth of driving, I've never truly had any issues with grip over snow and ice. I'll beat me and my wife take it easy in such conditions. We've never been a passenger and slid as a result, even in the rear powered Model 3. 
If you are interested in how my first experience was driving in the snow, you can take a look at this older video on the screen now. If any existing owners have any other tips, I'd appreciate it if you could let everybody know in the comment section below. If you're a new buyer, let me know if going electric during winter puts you on edge at all. And alternatively, if you are not sure what you want to comment and you want to let me know you've got this far in the video, you can simply comment preconditioning in long johns and I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for doing so. Anyhow, don't forget to subscribe, like the video and to share it with anyone or a beneficial group that may find it useful. You folks have been great as always and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.